Yo, what's up, family? Um, so I finally got home and got settled, and I wanted to do um, a quick little study with you guys on um, the prophet Joel. And I wanted to talk about a few other prophecies, you know, that are currently being fulfilled and ones that are yet to be fulfilled. Um, one thing is the Hebrew language family has been revived basically from the dead, and that's in Zephaniah 3, nine. And that's been fulfilled. All the nations of the world will come together against Israel over the issue of the control of Jerusalem. That's in Zechariah chapter 12, 1 through 3. That's currently, you know, pretty much taking place. Um, things that will come eventually, the Abraham, um, the Arab nations of the world will attack Israel in a coordinate effort to annihilate the state. That's in Psalms 83. Israel will soundly defeat the, Ar the Arab alliance, Zechariah 12.6. Israel will dwell in security and prosperity. That's in Ezekiel 38.11. A Russian coalition consisting mainly of Muslim nations will invade Israel. That's in Ezekiel 38.1-17. And also, family, I wanted to make something clear. In the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verses 13, it states, For the king of the north will return, will return. So there's there's a time where he goes in and he doesn't do so well, so he goes back to his land and musters up a multitude greater than, a, than the former and shall certainly come at the end of some years with a great army and much equipment. So just think about that and what's going on right now. Revelation 9.16 And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, 200 million, basically. And I heard the number of them. So remember, it's going to be many nations, <clears throat> many nations, family. Um, after this takes place, the Antichrist, that's when the Antichrist will intervene and guarantee security for Israel enabling the Jews to rebuild their temple. That's in Daniel 9.27. At the end of the three and a half years, the Antichrist will enter the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem and declare himself to be God. That's in Daniel 9.27, Matthew 24.15-18, and 2 Beth excuse me, family, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 3-4. The Jews will reject the Antichrist, and he will respond with an attempt to annihilate them, killing two-thirds of them in the process. That's in Revelation 12, verses 13 through 17, and Zechariah chapter 13, 8 through 9. Um, at the end of tribulation, family, when the Jews have come to the end of themselves, they will turn to God and receive Yeshua as their Messiah. That's in Zechariah 12.10, Romans 9.27-28, and Romans 11.25-27. Jesus will return and regather all the believing Jews to Israel. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 31-9. Israel will be established as a prime nation in the world. That's in Isaiah chapter 2, 1 through 4, and Micah chapter 4, 1 through 7. The Lord will bless the Jewish remnant by fulfilling all the promises he has made to Israel. Isaiah 60, 1 through 6. I'm sorry. Um, chapter 60, verse 1, and then chapter 62, verse 7. The blessings of God will flow out of the nations through the Jewish people during the millennium rule of Jesus. That's in Zechariah chapter 8, verses 22 through 23. Um, believers should find the fulfillment of these prophecies very encouraging because God has made a lot of promises through Bible prophecy to the church. And when I say the church, I mean the people. As we see the Lord fulfilling every promise he has made to the Jews, we can assure that he will fulfill all the promises he has made also to the church through his prophetic word. And you can read about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18. We will receive glorified, perfected bodies. You can read more about that in Isaiah 35, 5 through 6, and Philippians 3, verse 21. 
we will return to heaven with the Lord to await the end of tribulation. That's in John chapter 14, 1 through 4. While in heaven, we will be judged to receive the degrees of our rewards. That's in 2 Corinthians 5, 10. And we will celebrate our union with the Lord at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is in Revelation 19, 7 through 9. We will, will then return with the Lord to this earth. That is in Revelation 19, 14. And we will reign with him for a thousand years. Revelation 20, 1 through 6. During that glorious reign, we will see the earth flooded with peace, righteousness, and justice as the waters cover the seas. That's in Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 9. At the end of the millennial, we will be removed from this earth <clears throat> to the new Jerusalem the Lord has been preparing for us. And from the vantage point, we will be witnesses to the greatest firework display in history, family, as God envelops the earth in fire, burning away the pollution of Satan's last revolt. That's in Second Peter chapter 3, 10 through 13. Out of the fiery inferno will come new heavens and a new earth, and we will forever be in the new Jerusalem in the presence of the Almighty God and His Son. That's in Revelation 21. 1 through 7. So, you know, there's a lot of things that still have to take place. So, like I tell you guys, don't be deceived. Don't be so quick to um, think it's the end just yet. I mean, we are in the last days, but there are things that have to take place. So, just pay attention to what's going on. But um, even if Ukraine can somehow pull this off, um, this won't be the last you'll see of Russia family. The next time they come back, they'll be more prepared and they'll have more equipment. And the prophet Joel and the day of the Lord. Um, there, he, he, there were many prophetic writings um, when it comes to the prophet Joel as well. Joel 2, 3. And I will give portions of the heaven and, and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. When these verses are compared with the book of Revelation, you can see the benchmarks of the second coming of Christ and the end of the age. Um, however, um, family, Peter quoted the first portion of this message in the first New Testament sermon. Um, you can see Acts chapter 2, 17 through 21. Um, <clears throat> if you can take the time to read that, it's in Acts chapter 2. There's also Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall have dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even upon the men servants and the maid servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Furthermore, most of these prophecies are primarily uh, warnings from God about the nation's backsliding into idolatry and corruption. The punishment is revealed by then. The author also reminds the listeners of God's grace and his final blessings on Israel. The prophet's message contains good news and bad news, basically. It's a balance. Um, his words help the people understand why God's wrath is coming. Um... Peter was inspired to quote um, Joel and understood, you know, the balance um, of it. And um, Joel's message described the vast giving of the Holy Spirit and the, aw and the awesome heavenly signs of the second coming of the Messiah to conquer the evil in the world. There's so many scriptures in Revelation. Revelation 7, 9, Revelation 7, 14. The Lord's day or the day of the Lord, you, you know, is misunderstood as well. <clears throat> Many looking hard for the scriptures to prove the Sabbath law was altered, saying the term the Lord's day is Sunday. The Lord's day is actually his day of conquest and vengeance against Babylon the Great and all the evil powers of this age. Note the book of Revelation is about the day of the Lord. Um, a book describing events and battles and plagues, basically. Um, Revelation 1.10 I was in the spirit of the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Joel and his message um, describes much of what will happen in 
the God's day of vengeance on an evil world. I'm going to read you a few scriptures. Joel 1.15, Alas for the day, for the Lord is near, and the destruction from the Almighty it comes. Joel 1.19, Unto thee, O Lord, I cry, for fire, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the, fire, and the flame has burned all the trees of the field. Joel um, one twenty. Even the wild beasts cry to thee, because the water brooks are dried up, and the fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Joel two one. Blow the trumpet in Zion, in Zion. Sound an alarm of my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of gloom. A day of darkness, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness there is spread upon the mountains a great and powerful people. They're like never been from of old, nor will be again them the years of all generations. Christ will return at the last trumpet blast, and Joel is one of the first prophets to write about these times and the end time events. The day of the Lord is also a time of repentance, family. A lot of repentance will take care will take place during the tribulation. I pray it's a lot because there's a lot of people that they just don't recognize, you know, what's coming. If we, brethren, can repent now and we can be spared from the suffering that is coming, you know, we all need to listen to the words of the prophets regarding repentance. Revelation 3.10, because you have kept my word of patience, endurance, I will give you from the I will keep you from the hour of trial which is coming on the whole world to those who dwell on the earth I am coming soon hold fast that you have so that no one may cease your crown we can be in